your colon absorbs water faster than anything else in your body. Other random facts. 23 million Americans believe that brown cows create chocolate milk. My apologies for having the FBI at my house over the weekend. I've reported it. Take the cut flap of your eye and move it over and then lazy you know, you're gonna get back there. The names of these lip glosses are burned into my brain hole. Okay. Are you ready? Coochie juice. Booty hole brown. Nuts. Pink. Yellow discharge. Gonorrhea. Blue balls. And on my period. Everything in life at this point appears to be a game. Yeah. I don't want to play the game. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. This is my beautiful wife, Nona. I'm Andrew. And today we are talking about random nonsense on the internet that we saw. We should come up with a like a term for that. Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson, they have their, what they call their cosmic grab bag. And it's like random questions and things that commenters and stuff. Have th- it's like there's no rhyme or reason. Nothing is just single topic, if that makes sense. Well, the idea that I came up with and you totally tossed out a couple weeks ago was now that I'm back on social media, I wanted to do a segment each episode or potentially like every other episode where called Instasham and like random things we've seen on the internet. It doesn't have to be on Instagram specifically, but just random ass things that kind of boggled our mind and have to share with you guys. But yeah, he tossed it out, so we won't do that. If you want it, comment it. All right. Well, actually, I'll jump right in and I will do my Insta Sham post. How are they going to see it? What? No, they won't see anything. I'm about to tell you guys because oh. if I had to see this, you guys get to hear about it too. Sexy Red, Hold on. who is a rapper. Hold on. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, upvote, tweet, share, email, uh, follow. What else is there? I don't know. Join. <laughs> Sexy Red, who is a rapper, came out with a lip gloss line recently. And this is a boy or a girl? It's a woman. Okay. And the names of these lip glosses are burned into my brain hole. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Coochie juice. Booty hole brown. Nut. Pink. Yellow discharge. Gonorrhea. Blue balls. And on my period. So if I had to see that, here is the. Where's it even gonna be sold? Probably straight onto her website. Uh, yeah, online. So nobody's gonna buy it. Oh, she's got some followers, so. Doesn't mean anything. Didn't <sighs> didn't you see that? So that's my Insta Sham moment. That video that I was watching a week or two ago about that chef. I guess it was on. I don't even know if she's actually a real chef, but she created that pink sauce or whatever. Oh, yeah. She was like a TikTok viral person. But they, that's, that's they like kept what, saying chef, but I don't know if she was I actually a chef. I think she called herself that, but okay. she became famous from like TikTok as far as I know. So she said to file for bankruptcy and stuff now because of it? Okay. Yeah, because it was like full of bacteria, right? Well, the first batch she made at home. Okay. And then shipped it just however. Okay. So packages were exploding. They were taking And this was during COVID. Yeah, this Are this you was sure? yeah, this was during COVID. Name? I don't know what her name is. You're the one who watched the video. All I know is pink sauce. Mm, pink sauce is pink dipping sauce created by TikTok user Veronica Shaw, better See? known by her screen name Chef. Right. Bye. She she was famous on TikTok. I, I said TikTok to begin with. Right, but you kept saying maybe she was like a real chef and what's her no, name? No, I don't like, know if I she actually know. has the credentials of a chef is what I'm saying. I don't know if she's All actually a chef. All I know is that she was famous during COVID 
on TikTok. She invented it two years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. 2022. It doesn't. Oh, June 11th, 2022. Okay. It's a little after COVID, but whatever. Yep. And let's see here. July, January 11th, 2023, following reformation of the recipe and packaging design to adhere with the FDA. So it took her, took her six months to figure out that the FDA doesn't play. <laughs> Um, cause that, that was one of the clips that he showed were, was her reading comments and she, her saying something along the lines of, I'm, I'm a small business. I don't have to adhere to the FDA. And they're like, uh, like yeah, you do definitely not buying your product. Mm-hmm. So uh, the entire journey, all she I did was swear I heard about her before 2022. Yeah. So they actually have, they have a comment in her f- from it. Uh, when asked whether her product was approved by the FDA, she stated that her product was not a medical product, causing further backlash from commenters who noted that the FDA is responsible for regulating food alongside drugs. That was October 2022, so three months after she had mm. released it. Um, <laughs> on August 2nd, 2022, the FDA opened an investigation into pink sauce. So did, okay. their response was swift. <laughs> uh, she started a GoFundMe page alleging something last August uh, that the food company that she worked with, and I had seen in, in the video that they had responded with an official statement saying that she stopped ordering. The, we're not just going to make your product for you if you're not paying. Right. So... Yeah, the whole thing. It sounds like poor planning, lack of follow through. She didn't know what she was doing to begin with. Yep. I wonder, I, it doesn't say anything in here if she's actually a chef. So I'm just going to guess that she's not. I'm going to guess that she's not as well. The other problem that she had was she... Anybody that asked a legitimate question like that, Mm -hmm. she treated it like it was a joke. Obviously, I don't know all the all of it. All I know is the content that I saw, people screenshots and the videos. There were a lot of snippets of her responding to comments and posts and emails and you know the people reviewing the Mm -hmm. product, buying it and then having inconsistent color and then asking. Hey, what's in this product? Because I have food allergies. Right. And her saying that she doesn't have to release it. And then coming back and saying, oh, the product will have a label. <laughs> every time, every time she would think that she was on the right. And then mm-hmm. enough people, and then she'd have to come back and say, well, I'm doing this. Well, but she's lucky at this point that bankruptcy is all that she's filing for. And the nobody sued her. Yep. Or I might be misspeaking. Did somebody sue her? Mm, it doesn't say anything here. There's, there's controversy. Um, a YouTuber made a video about it. Uh, responses, FDA, GoFundMe page. Mm. She she only made, she was asking for 100000 in her GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. She only had one donor and it was, 24,200 and she only made an additional $1,019 in addition to that. So she didn't Somebody even, donated 24 grand to her. That's what it says, $24,240. There was speculation from the guy, the video that I watched that it was her donating to herself. Oh. To like inflate it. Cause that's a normal thing. If you guys don't know that it's just, Think of it like the tip jar when you go somewhere. Okay. You There's always money in the tip jar, but it's usually from the gotcha. organization. So there's a psychological aspect to seeing money in there and feeling compelled to add to it, whatever. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You can never have it too full because then it looks like you're making too much money. So it has to look like, well, a couple of people have put money in there, but not too much. And so you have to take it out and it's a whole game. Okay. Everything in life at this point appears to be a game. Yeah. I don't want to play the game. 
You have to because I don't you want have to, to. You have to be alive. Not letting you not be alive. I don't want to play the game. Anyway, so back to all of these random grab bag of topics. Have you bought anything ever that you've seen from a Instagram TikToker? Yeah, remember the chicken socks? Okay. So Cash and I were scrolling on Instagram Reels one morning when he he, he used to wake up like 5 a.m. with me and he would come snuggle in bed while I was drinking my coffee and we were just scrolling on Reels and somebody was doing a workout like bench pressing and leg pressing with their chicken socks that go all the way up to their thighs and it was just we were dying laughing because it looked like they had chicken legs. So I I feel like this is different because that's more of like a gag gift. Yeah. Versus. And, and so I got them because Charlotte was having her skating party at the ice skating rink, and you have to wear multiple layers, obviously, to stay warm. And these you are you have to wear multiple layers. Okay, normal <laughs> people have to wear multiple layers to stay warm, and so I ordered three pairs of these chicken leg socks that go all the way up to the kid's thighs. Cooper doesn't want to ice skate, so I didn't order any for him. I knew he wouldn't wear them anyways. So all three of the kids who were ice skating got to wear their chicken socks <laughs> and have their chicken legs. It was really cute. I was asking more in terms of like a new product. We've already had this conversation. I give zero Fs about what is new and what is special. That's not what I'm asking. So no, I'm asking, I've never once gone, oh, I wish I could have. So, okay. I don't care. That was my question. Just if you'd ever done that before. Wait, you asked specifically, have I ever ordered any, anything off of Instagram okay. or watching okay. like a real okay. thing? So I answered your question okay. it was exactly in, of how you asked it. It was implied, would you have bought pink sauce? <laughs> I don't like sauce to begin with other than. Okay. Quit picking at the details. <laughs> I'm talking broadly. No, I would never have ordered pink sauce off of TikTok. No, I would never have done that. Would you have Andrew? No, I don't buy anything that's advertised to me ever. I have things that I already like and that's all that I'm ever going to buy. Mm. Okay. What, what has been advertised to me that I've bought? I, no, I already knew the guys even before the company started. Okay. I want a new shirt. I'm still buying from the brand. Okay, but on several episodes ago, you said that you had never consumed coffee on a regular basis until Black Rifle Coffee. No. No. So, no. I said the first time I ever had coffee was at MEPS in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and I didn't ever drink coffee because I drank Red Bull and... Mountain Dew used to have one, but that was because I had a bad experience. But then I had Black Rifle before it was even Black Rifle as a product of Article 15 clothing. Mm -hmm. As they were, anybody that was in Drinking Bros, the group at the time, and this, you know, hey, help us get it out there, try it, whatever. And I had it, and I was like, oh, this is actually good. Right. And it sounds like... But there are people that I knew. These are my friends that I was it's supporting. It's still a product of no. advertising. <laughs> No. Just because you happen to know them as well. I I follow or am followed by a couple other coffee companies. I have never and will never try their product. It's not the same thing. Okay. It's your friends reaching out to you and saying, hey, try this out. Let me know what you think. Okay. And then I actually liked it, so I continued getting it. Okay. It's not the same thing. Okay. When you know the people, and this happens in anything. Even in your line of business, in insurance. Hey, come to me for this thing. Or, you know, maybe I can shop around, get you better rates, or I can do this, or I can do that. That's you having a conversation with people that you know. These aren't people that are outside of your circle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, that's, it makes a difference. Big difference. What do you guys think? That I'm Do right. you think his coffee consumption of Black Rifle 
is a product of just trying as a friend and has continued for the last five plus years. Ten. Okay, I was going to say ten at first, but I didn't know how long the company had been around. Yeah. Have you seen me go buy any other coffee anywhere else ever? <sighs> no, you haven't. Right. So I'm asking them, do they think that it's a product of you testing as a friend and just sticking with it and never trying anything new? Or is it low-key advertising? They didn't even have an ad budget. They didn't have anything. Right. They just had but getting people to test out your product is advertising. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. That's the testing phase. That's the, uh, what do you call it? When you have a bunch of people in it's the room. It's establishing a clientele. No. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. We can agree to disagree then. I, I, this is what I do professionally. I know the difference. It's not advertising. When I had my cupcake business, I gave away so many cupcakes to friends and family to establish... You were trying a to a clientele. They and were not. They, they were not became trying to customers because they tried them your, out. Your intention was to build that audience. Their intention was product testing and development. That's not advertising. It's the same thing. No, it's not. R and D. Because I was trying out new flavors. Please give me feedback. You know, it's a key lime margarita flavored. Um, how many people do you think I'm talking about that they involved in this? Hundreds. No. Tens. Okay. Still. It's not advertising. None of us had what any do you sort guys of reach. Think? None of us had any sort of reach that was meaningful. But it's giving feedback. And none of us, that's not marketing. And that's, then continuing. Not everyone continued. That's not advertising. But they've continued to advertising send you stickers or other small promotional products to let me just remind you that we are here. That's called customer service. It's also advertising. It's customer service. What do you guys think? Who is right in this? That's that's just normal that happens. There's people um, in all different various, I don't know, groups and things like that that get stuff just for being a previous customer. Okay. Google used to send for Nexus and Pixel owners, people that were on Fi when it was Project Fi originally, um, they used to send us something every year as like a Christmas gift. Mm-hmm. They sent a battery bank one year. They sent a Lego that was your phone. You build it and it's your phone stand. Um, What'd you do with it? To the best of my knowledge, I still had it, but I don't know where it, it would be. Definitely gone before my kids came into your life. Otherwise, no, you probably, totally would have shown no, them. It was probably in a, in a box, still in a box. It was. It's not like it was a lot of parts. It was maybe 30, 40 bricks. It's just enough that you could. Yeah, that's still slide something the that they would totally love to see. But okay. Yeah. And it was in there in Google's colors. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. What's next on the topic list? What? What's next on the topic oh, list? I said, just asked you. It sounded like you said that. Um, let's scroll through here. Let's. Well, we talked about the Octomom thing. Not on the podcast we did. No, no, no. You and I said. We talked about the Octomom yeah. thing. I pulled up the article. So, that so way why, I was is ready. This, why is this person famous to begin with? She's famous for being the Octomom, being pregnant with eight babies at once. So did that they do, made her famous. Did they do a TV show or something? Uh, I think she was on like the Today Show and things like that. But it just, she became famous for having impregnated herself with eight babies. They were all, they were like IVF sperm insemination babies. So it was intentional that it was yes, eight? Yes, it was intentional that it was eight. That's So yeah, her name's Nadia Suleiman. Um, she became a grandmother recently, like maybe like a month ago. From one of the eight? Well, that's, what, that's why I actually clicked on the article because 
the eight babies, I believe she had them when I was pregnant with Cooper. And so, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had uh, octoplets in 2009. So, yeah, I was pregnant with Cooper in 2009. I had him in 2010. Um, But it does not say which of the children had the baby because apparently she has 14 children. So she had children before she became the octo mom. I believe the octo babies were the last pregnancy, but I'm not sure. This is a picture from 2023 with her and some of the eight. So that was 11 years ago. So those kids are definitely. Yeah, but if she has. What? No, she gave birth to the eight babies in 2009 when I was pregnant with Cooper. So you're saying, yes, yes, potentially (laughs) one could be a teen mom, but I do not believe that it is one of the eight that were born in 2009. I believe it is a child who was born previously because she has 14 total children. That's too many. (laughs) Is what I'm trying to say, because nowhere in the article does it say that it is one of the eight. It's just one of her 14 children had a child. So I I believe it would have clarified in the article. She's a media personality, according to people. Because that's all, that's all she has ever done. She did like interviews with people and things like that. That's how she paid her bills for the last several years. And then she got like, extreme plastic surgery to, you know, fix her stomach after stretching it out with it, eight babies. And just that's what she became known for after she had her extreme pregnancy. Yeah. It says that she intentionally didn't reveal which one it was. So that makes it sound to me. No, I think, I think it's intentional that way. So that way it is clickbait. You go, oh my God, like me, I remember when she was pregnant with the eight babies, they definitely are not old enough to be a mom. So I think it's one of her older children. I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope that it is one of her older children, not one of the babies that were born in 2009 because Although, yes, you can be physically able to where's have she, a child. Where's then. she from? I knew people that were 15 that had kids. Yes, like I said, I know you can physically have children at that time. Emotionally, I do not believe that 15-year-olds are emotionally ready to become parents. That's where I was going with that before you cut in and said, I knew people who are 15. Mm-hmm. So were they emotionally ready, Andrew? I don't know. They, I wasn't in a relationship with them. He went to a high school that had a daycare facility in the high school. Has. Has. It didn't go away. Oh, boy. Why Why wouldn't you? The, the school itself offers programs for... Everything you could imagine. I am not discrediting the fact that it occurs. No, no, no. I am listen, not listen. saying that it is a bad listen, thing. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. No. The school itself offers programs and coursework and stuff to get you into the post-secondary education track that you want to go into, one of which is child care. So if you have a child care facility at your school and you teach that, to the the kids that you're developing to go into that degree program after high school. Right. Why wouldn't you? We had, we had auto trades where you can go to the shop and work on a car. Like there's, I'm not, I am not saying that it is a bad thing for those who need it. It wasn't, it wasn't for only for students. Worry is that it being so accessible 
then makes it almost an excuse. Oh, it's okay. My school has a daycare. I'll just take my baby with me. I don't need to worry about protection. I Not never had having that consideration, consequences so. for your actions in any situation will be a negative. How's that not still a consequence? You still have to take care of the kid. But you know that you can just drop your baby for seven and a half hours while you're at school. Whereas if I had gotten pregnant in high school, that was not an option. So getting pregnant in high school was not an option for me. Did anybody period. in high school get pregnant? Yeah. How many? <sighs> Off the top of my head, I know of three girls who got pregnant in high school. And, how many and were I'm in your class? sure more got pregnant and had abortions and, that I don't know about. And how many were in your class? Of that I know of, about three. No. How many people total in your entire graduating class? Oh, my graduating class senior year, it was like 375. Okay. So that's one out of every 100. So if you extrapolate that to the population of my school, that means roughly 11, which sounds about right. So they had accessibility and didn't have any higher occurrence. Okay. I actually think 11 might even be a high number. Okay. So possibly who knows? I didn't ever talk to anybody ever that said, oh, I can get pregnant. It's okay because the school has a daycare. <laughs> right. But that's also not something that you would have in conversation with your bros. That's not a bro conversation. Oh, yeah. No problem. I'm talking about any, the girls <laughs> or anybody. Nobody ever talked about that. In right, fact, Right. Because that's not a conversation that you have. In fact, I think if I remember, and I only was friends with a couple of them, the majority of them were flat out embarrassed. I would hope so. So who knows? <laughs> not my chair, not my problem. That's what I say. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Columbus Day is trending, but the reason why is stupid. I mean, Columbus Day in general is stupid, but it has nothing to do with the day. It's about Palestine. Okay. <laughs> Um, I had another one on the second page that I really wanted to bring up. Matlock. Have you seen the previews for this? I don't know what that is. What's Matlock? It was a show years ago. I don't know how long ago it was. And this seemed, it seemed like it, they were reviving it. Okay. But she mentions in the preview that I saw like the show or something along those lines. So either it's like it was also a show in the universe that the show is occurring in or they recorded. I don't know. I, I never watched the show, but I knew of it. Okay. Um, but the new one is played by uh, what's her name? Bobby Boucher's mom. She was in the office and all that. She's lost a lot of weight. Are you talking about, um, Oh, God. I'm blanking on her name. Kathy Bates. Yes, but she just announced that she's done. She just started the show. It, it's just coming out. Okay, well, type in Kathy Bates, like, announces she's done um, uh, acting, retiring. This quote from New York Times that CBS ran says... Uh, she will never retire. I literally saw this like four or five days ago. Despite telling the New York Times that CBS's Matlock is her last dance, Kathy Bates told Deadline Tonight on the Emmy's red carpet that she will never retire. And that came out days ago. Okay, whatever. So maybe it was taken out of context. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Clarifying the headlines out there. She told Rosie Cordero tonight. I was thinking about maybe going into semi-retirement until I got Jenny Ehrman's script for Matlock Bates said, 
I read it and said, oh, yeah, baby, I got to do this. It's amazing. Okay. So apparently she just liked that show so much that she decided to not semi-retire. Okay. Was she ever, was she ever like a consistent face on anything? She was in the office for what, one season, two, like a, I wouldn't she's even, always in something, whether it's a movie, a show, something. She's she's always in something. Somebody's like mom, somebody's grandma, somebody's. Do you like her? Yeah, overall, yeah. Why do you not? Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. When you see the picture side by side, like I knew she looked like she lost weight, but when you see that, you're, yeah, she lost weight. That's not the same. That bottom person. third picture. Is what I always think of her as. This is every time I think of her, I think of that. And when I see her lighter, like I, I can tell that she's lost weight because mm-hmm. that's what I always remember is being bigger woman. She's from Memphis, Tennessee. Let's see her movies. Let's see how consistent her movie career was. Probably uh, like every oh, year. And remember, so when we were recording yesterday, mm-hmm. I said, Oh, if I would have paid attention, I would see that... It's in order? Yeah, they're not, again. <laughs> There's, it's just random, I guess, I don't know. Titanic? I didn't know she was in mm-hmm. that. Did you know that? Yes. She's been in a movie this year, A Family Affair. What else has she been in? She's been in The Blind Side, obviously Waterboy, mm-hmm. Annie, Failure to Launch, Tammy... She was in Tammy? Yes. The aunt or whatever who has the nice house that she goes and stays at. Interesting. Tammy was filmed here, by the way. Was it? Yeah, I told you that while you were watching it. Oh. She was in Bad Santa, too. She's been in a lot of movies, but most of these are late 90s, early 2000s. She's definitely had a gap seemingly 2010 until about 2021 she didn't really do anything movie wise at least Mm. tv shows she's in the office obviously uh that show okay so normally they show you the range in which the actor or person that you're looking up was in that show. This is saying that she was in 20, 2005, 2013, but that's the full range of the office, right? Yeah. So she was definitely not in yeah. that full range. She was in two and a half men, uh, six feet under, which I've never watched. I don't know if you have Mm-mm. American horror story a couple times. I don't know. What Did I, you ever watch American horror story? No. Seems like a show you would be into. What was the, what's the other one? Oh, mowers are here. Cool. Of course, inconsistent schedule all the time. If you guys hear that, sorry about that. usually Wednesday when I'm at the office. Well, it was Tuesday and then it became Wednesday Mm -hmm. and now it's today. Today's Monday for us. It's Monday for you guys, actually. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. That's, so she actually hasn't been in very many TV shows. At least nothing long running or consistent. The majority of these look like cameos. Oh, well. Okay. Let's see here. What else we got? What else we got trending? Did you only have that one topic? No. Yes. No. No, I have more. I That was just my, oh. if you want to keep hearing random things like this to brain, burn into your brain hole. Bella Ramsey's trending. Something shares powerful reaction to Oscar winning film, something, something. But I've seen her in the new um, Apple commercials. And it's funny because all of the features that Apple is running their ads about, their Apple intelligence AI features, okay. they're not even released yet. Okay. So if you buy a new phone, you don't even get to use the feature that they're pitching. Did you see the straight up cult for the first person that bought the new phone last week no. or whatever it was? No. What happened? They had all of their employees lined up inside of their store in like New York or something like okay. that. And they're all clapping as they opened the door and only let one one person in okay. and escorted him up to the counter. And they're all like, AI, 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 AI. And the guy was like, Dude, just, <laughs> I'm just here to get my phone and me, leave. <laughs> yeah, just give me the f- 
counter so I can get my phone. This That's is funny. so weird. He looked very, very out of place and nervous. They just grabbed the first random person that was standing at mm. the door. And apparently that's how all of them. It's weird. It's. I've only been to an Apple store one time. Nobody was cheering or clapping for Is me. Is there even one here? No. Okay. I didn't think so. They're pretty much only in big cities, right? Yeah. Charlotte, North Carolina is the one I went to. I don't think Myrtle Beach has one. There's not one in Myrtle Beach as far as I know. I wonder because I've Myrtle Beach has it. It's so weird because with it being a like a tourist trap, it also kind of attracts places like that because they know there's going to be people that have money that are going to break or lose a device or whatever. Mm. So I'm curious. Apple Store is that just what they're called? Just Apple sure. Store. Apple Store locations. locations. Find a store. Apple Store Finder. While you're doing that, I have a question for you. Okay. Have you ever heard of... There's one in Raleigh, one in Durham. Ranger IV. He was an Army Ranger medic. No. Army medic. Yeah. Army... All of the above, yeah. Okay. The MOS is 68 Whiskey combat medic or healthcare specialist, depending on who you ask. Okay. So what is a Ranger IV? I'm going to go with one of two things. It's either this is a product or this service. This is a slang term. Oh, then probably rectal. Putting the tube and then stopping on the bag. What? Yeah. Okay. Now you have to... What? Force hydration for um, heat casualty patients. It wasn't something that we were supposed to do, but it's something that we could do. We were... What? Yeah, you got it right. Your your colon absorbs water faster than <laughs> anything else in your body. Crazy. That's what you were looking up? Or how, how did this come up for you? Oh, my what, God. What? what? I didn't look up anything, no, Andrew. No, that's, that's what I'm asking. How did this come up? Like, what is randomly on Instagram? <laughs> and it's so named because of Army Rangers, notorious for rim jobs and play. Okay, so <laughs> to be clear for the audience out there, the most accurate way to get somebody's actual body temperature is a core temp, and that's rectal. The best way to, or the fastest way to absorb fluids into the human body, especially if somebody has collapsed veins and, or their hard stick is through their colon. So you shove the thermometer up there and you get their temp and then you shove the tube up there and you stomp on the bag. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're still searching for Apple stores. I, that's that's as closest to Wilmington, Raleigh, Durham, Charleston. All of those are farther okay, away guess, than Myrtle Beach. I guess Charleston is a little bit closer than Charlotte. Yeah. By only like 20 minutes, if that. What was the account that was talking about Ranger V? I don't know. I just took a screenshot of it and have moved on. Okay. I saw it like three weeks ago. I'm, I'm just I've been curious. saving I'm, these in an album to talk okay. about on the podcast okay. that you never let me talk about. Anyways. Anyways. Other random fact. 23 million Americans believe that brown cows create chocolate milk. Does it say who ran the poll? A surprising survey by the Innovation Center for the U.S. Dairy revealed that approximately 7% of American adults believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. To put this into perspective, 23 million people is the equivalent to the population. Um, that's funny because I used to tell that to the kids Does it while like I was breastfeeding that... You're not a brown cow, so they can't have chocolate milk? No. <laughs> that if I ate chocolate, it would taste like chocolate milk. 
And that wasn't actually anything that I came up with. That was something the kids came up with. So what are they? Never mind. Did it say what their sample size is? Because I'm curious. I No, I already closed it out and everything. Okay. There's nothing really interesting trending, other than the fact that we're probably going to get screwed again in a week or so. There's another storm forming in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, but it's it's projected to go up the Gulf, not to us. It's supposed to hit the Panhandle of Florida and come up the coast again. Oh. But there's also one developing off the Horn of Africa. Oh, okay, yeah. Cool. So, and the rain's, Yay. the water still hasn't gone away yet. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Is there anything? So apparently Blake Lively and Ryan and Reynolds are buying a home in Charlotte, North Carolina, since I already talked about Charlotte. Um, to Didn't you tell me that? Yes. Okay. I did when I was coming up with podcast ideas a whole week ago and you turned it down. So I'm just going to keep okay. spouting off things while you're all randomly <gasps> scrolling over there. I got one that... Because they want to live a more normal life outside of the this, L.A. scene. I got one that came up and I was starting to bring it up yesterday when we were, or for us yesterday when we were talking about Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, the only comedian that I ever really watched any stand-up from mm-hmm. was Mark Lawrence from way back in the day. Okay. The, the one that I still remember was right shortly after 9-11. Okay. And he talked about um, parenting and stuff. And he's like, how you prevent kids like the Menendez brothers that killed their parents Mm -hmm. is you got to snatch them up. He's like, (laughs) I'm not going to be able to repeat probably any of it, Mm -hmm. but I'll say the gist of it. Like the father's, the the mother's giving birth. You got to be right in there, right in their faces. They're coming out of the womb. Tell them, you know, I'm your dad. You're going to listen Obviously, these aren't his choice of words. The words that he's saying, for one, I can't repeat. So, supposedly, that's why they killed their parents is because the dad was abusive. No, he wasn't talking about being abusive. He was talking about saying, I'm in charge. You're not going to do that kind of shit to me. You're not going to do that to our family. You're going to listen. You're going to respect. Okay, but there's a fine line be- between respect and fear. Okay. So if you, in fact, fear the person who is in the father role, then no, they don't respect you. They fear you and they fear for their life. And so Hmm. I'm not defending them. I'm just what he's making as a joke is not funny. I think it's funny. I don't. But did you see that Netflix is coming out with a special for them? That's That's why you're talking about it. Monsters. Mm hmm. Are you going to watch it? They're also, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's uh, Netflix or not, but or Amazon or whoever it was, but there's also one about um, Aaron, I didn't even, Aaron Hernandez. I didn't even hear about it until I was like a teenager, and it apparently happened like the month I was born, like August 89. Hmm. I only learned about it from Martin Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there also there's also an Aaron Hernandez No, it's on FX. I know I saw that. I saw it was a commercial during a game. You know who Aaron Hernandez is, right? Yeah, Yeah. but back to the Menendez. Menendez. Menendez? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Menendez Brothers. Monsters Menendez Brothers. Did you know that they were tried separately and it was like a hung jury and then they were finally tried together in like 96, like seven years later or six years later after it actually occurred? And that's when they were sentenced. Like there was was, somebody together. Yeah. So I don't know. Look it up. It's like a wild story. Are we going to watch it? Is that what you're saying? I I could watch it. The first, the first article that comes up is about Kim Kardashian. Of course. (laughs) Did her, did he represent them? What's his name? No, he did not. As far as I know, he he was OJ, not Menendez. Well, she's in all of the articles for whatever reason. Because she touches everything and it turns to Who represented? The Menendez brothers yep. and failed in the process. I don't know. I don't um, know if you can win or lose.
clues in that. It's one of the main characters of the show. Whoever Leslie Abramson, she represented one of the brothers. That's the only one that they're talking about. And she's trending now because of it. Oh. So apparently a lot of people have seen there's they're not talking about who the other one is if they even exist. So weird. So not Robert Kardashian. Nope. Like I said, I don't think that the Kardashians had anything to do with the Menendez brothers. You know what? I wonder with a lot of these things. Wait, yeah. And weren't they East Coast too? They weren't even in California. I think they were outside of like New Jersey. So? Yeah. So you. If you're high profile enough and you have enough money, you can get whoever you want and be tried depending on jurisdiction. That's seriously all the time. This happens all the time. They'll try and change venue and do all this other kind of stuff. And they'll yeah, change they, county venues, but not whole states. Depending on where you're arrested and arraigned and how, you know, who has jurisdiction, because if it was a federal case, then it can be tried pretty much anywhere. There's a lot of weird nonsense that goes into that. And obviously the only people that know how to navigate that are overpriced attorneys. Right. Which obviously neither of us are. Yeah. Cause they, th- that's do stuff, not take legal advice from us other than do not do crime. Yeah. That stuff, that stuff happens all the time though. It's so weird. Like they'll have a, you know, like a tech person will have a trial and it will be set for whatever court in, you know, one state. And then they'll convince the uh, legal system to move it to a completely different state where it's more favorable for them. And just the reason why you're seeing Kim Kardashian pop up is probably because of her cease and desist letters that she's been sending out. To who for what she was involved with them. Involved with who? The Menendez brothers? No. These are articles about the show and about the brothers. Yeah, so she's I don't headline. know how she pertains to that at all. I think that she is only in the news. No, no. her and the actor went to visit the brothers in jail, it says. And it's her picture. What? It's not even them. Yeah. Why? Why do these people do anything? That's so weird. Kim Kardashian took Richard Donovan. Oh, took to the Richard Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego over the weekend to speak about prison reform to a group of incarcerated people, including the brothers and convicted killers, Lyle and Eric Menendez. Oh, okay. I thought it was the cease and desist letters that she's been sending everybody for posting the video of her and Diddy. Wasn't the uh, wasn't the prison reform thing a uh, Kanye thing originally? Uh, she started it when they were married. Okay, it was it was it was her, but she started it when they were married. You're not going to reform anything. So Andrew loves the HOA; it's his favorite thing. So I figured I should share this with Andrew and you guys because the HOA is so fun. This will be the last story, by the way, because you got to go. That's fine. Um, so a man had a birthday party at his house and there were several blacked out SUVs, blacked out how Where I want this location. I actually don't know. Okay. Um, blacked out SUVs, how I want it. Like I've got a, I've got a black SUV already, but I want it black on black on black on black. And that's how all of these vehicles look. You can see for a second. Um, So he received an email after the birthday party from the HOA directly to him. Dear blank, obviously his name is blanked out. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to reach out regarding an incident that occurred over the weekend during your birthday party. A few of us in the community couldn't help but notice the arrival of three blacked out SUVs, which quite frankly startled and unsettled several of your neighbors. It's really concerning to see such vehicles shown up in our otherwise peaceful family oriented neighborhood, especially without any prior notice. 
As you can imagine, the sight of them raised a lot of questions and caused sight. Oh, sorry. The sight of them raised a lot of questions and caused quite a bit of anxiety. Some residents even thought something more serious was happening. The whole situation was quite honestly alarming, and we had no idea how to react. Obviously, I need LASIK eye surgery at this point since I had to bring that up closer to my eyes. But don't you love the HOA, Andrew? Dumb. <laughs> it's, it's legitimately pathetic. Like... Um, so hold on. I screenshotted a couple of the comments at this point. I would have just messed with them. My apologies for having the FBI at my house over the weekend. I've reported it. You They'll can visit. You can go get some little led light bars that are, <laughs> they use those, uh, suction cups and they plug into cigarette lighters. That's what I would do next. I would have, I would buy them, give them to my friends that have those vehicles and have them come flying in rapidly <laughs> And run inside the house before anybody can see them and just have a little football watch party or something. Here's here's another one. Even black cars are allowed in their neighborhood. And then here's another wow. one. So his neighbors are doing illegal stuff. I'll say stuff instead of the other one. And got spooked. So that's what I'm actually seeing. Possibly. Quote, unquote, caused a lot of anxiety people and their feelings kills me. <laughs> but yeah, I thought you would love that. And yes, I will get LASIK eye surgery for you guys and apparently a, a, a tongue lashing. PRK. Do you have an astigmatism? Yes, I do. PRK then. Similar but different. They have to cut a flap of your eye and move it over and then laser and then lay the flap back down. Okay. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. And if you have I to ever be awake. get it done, you have to be awake and they pry your eyes open. The yeah. You're time. awake for LASIK eye surgery too. No, but I'm saying I've watched for, it happen. I'm saying while they take a razor blade and slit over the top. Yeah. I've watched it happen. Okay. I was, PR, you've I, seen PRK. I don't know. I watched it on huh. the camera in the waiting room. while I was the driver. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll be it. We're out of here. Goodbye.